Hi there, and welcome to the first in the series of Logic Monitor's world's shortest webinars. This one will focus on NetApp monitoring and how to set it up and be running in minutes. Uh, we've got a good turnout, so let's see how easy it is to configure NetApp monitoring with Logic Monitor. So I'm going to add a new NetApp device from scratch, creating a new NetApp, file2.core.den. That's all you need to do is put in the IP address or DNS name. Logic Monitor will do everything else. We're going to change the display name just to demonstrate that, put it in a group, and submit. Uh, so if we look at this, we now see file 2. We don't know anything about it yet. For this to work, this NetApp has to be running SNMP. We've configured that into Logic Monitor previously. We have set up an agent previously. And we have enabled API access for Logic Monitor. Uh, that's just defined globally, though. You do that once. Set your global properties. So the SNMP community, the NetApp credentials for the API access, they're all inherited. You can override them on a group or a host level. It does take about a minute or so for the logic monitor to discover everything about this host. Um, okay, we've discovered it's a NetApp and a variety of things about it already, but while we're waiting for the rest of the things to be complete, we can go look at an existing NetApp that we've been monitoring a bit longer. A variety of data that's displayed here, but I'll just give you a quick example of how you could use logic monitor if perchance you got an alert. Uh, let me slide this across so we get a bit more view. If you got, if you saw this CPU usage and you were alarmed by it, you wanted to know what was going on, what caused that. That's typically a hard problem to solve in many NetApp environments. Uh, with Logic Monitor, it's very simple. Okay, so you see there's a spike in CPU usage, corresponding increase in disk activity. Um, there should also be a corresponding increase in network throughput, hopefully. Yes, there is. All right, so we saw increase in CPU load caused by disk activity caused by traffic coming in and out of the filer. Typically, that's hard to isolate as to which volume is doing it. Uh, with Logic Monitor, it's very simple. If we look at our volume performance data source, we see our, the, all the physical aggregates that have been discovered on this filer. On our data, data aggregate, we see all the, all the volumes that are on that aggregate. If we expand the automatically generated overview graph, you can see that at the time of the CPU spike, which is 2.30, we can see that there was a corresponding spike in the total operations on this aggregate. If we look at the breakdowns by the individual volumes, we can see that this spike was the app stage volume that caused the spike. So now we scroll down and look at the app stage volume. Uh, there's, the inc there's the spike. We go up to 5,000 operations per second. They're all of other type. So the question now is, did this impact my volume's performance or other volume on the same aggregate's performance? So looking at the latency graph, we can see that in general, no, there was a spike in writes, in the write latency at this time. Um, so now a question would be how many writes were going on and did this affect other volumes? And it is this typical. So we could zoom out to a different time frame and see, you know, it's not typical. Uh, usually this writes are very fast, except for the occasional sp that this one spike. And reads are also very fast. So we go back to this graph. We can see if we filter away the other information, the other file operations, directory operations, just to look at reads and writes, Okay, so we can see there were, in fact, there was, in fact, a spike of writing write operations at that time. So there were 239 write operations per second. So that's why there was a bit of a jump in latency on that volume. Um, so now the next question is, did that affect other volumes? More specifically, did it affect our production volumes? So if we look at, for instance, the database production volume at the same time, Operations per second is fairly consistent. Latency is very good, not affected at all. Uh, a very trivial spike from in writes from 3 to 4 milliseconds and a trivial spike in reads at the same time from 8 to 9 milliseconds. So no problems with that. So now we can safely say that uh, Logic Monitor has informed us that despite our spike in the CPU, we don't have any issues. Uh, one other thing, i just quickly look at the disk performance on the data aggregate. Logic Monitor will have discovered all the... Uh, physical disks in this aggregate, and we can look, again, there's an automatic overview graph. We can see the utilization, how busy the individual disks are, and whether we need to rebalance them. Um, at the moment, it looks things look pretty good. So let's go back to that NetApp we added before. 
Uh, we've done no work on it except define it, and there it is. All the same information has been added. So now, volume use, all the volumes have been detected. They're being monitored for performance, interfaces, individual CPUs, the snapshots. If this NetApp was involved in a a snap mirror replication lag would be charted and alerted. So basically everything you need to know to monitor in a NetApp is predefined. Uh, we do have a few questions that have come up in the short time, but that's... One question is, is this just a NetApp monitoring tool? Uh, I think you can see here we have a variety of other devices. We have web servers, load balancers, routers. We can look at all them in a different webinar, but no, we're not just a NetApp monitoring tool. We cover the complete infrastructure. Um, no, another question, if we have NetApp's DFM, why would we want Logic Monitor? Good question. Uh, you may not need Logic Monitor. N NetApp DFM or Operations Manager is a great tool for managing the configuration of a large variety of NetApps. We don't do configuration management at all. We just do monitoring. However, that being said, Monitoring with Logic Monitor is a lot easier than with DFM. With DFM, you have to specifically tell it what to monitor and when. Logic Monitor, everything's just monitored by default out of the box, no configuration needed. There's already alerts set on everything. Um, if anything goes wrong, shelf electronic failures, temperature sensors, power supply failures, fan failures, latency issues, volume starting to fill up, you'll know about it. And of course, the other factor, which relates back to the previous question, Logic Monitor isn't just a NetApp monitoring system. Uh, it monitors your entire infrastructure. So if you want to see if my volume latency is increasing, is that affecting my database response time, you can answer that quite simply with Logic Monitor. But we'll go into that in another webinar. And uh, so we know your time is valuable. So that is it for the Logic Monitor World Shortest Webinar. A few key takeaways. Um, Yes, it really is that quick and easy. You add a host, it's fully monitored. There's not much to it. Given that we are a hosted system, getting from zero to the point where you can add a host takes about five minutes because you do have to install the Java application and, and uh, give it its credentials and then enter your SNMP and API accesses keys. But that's really it. Um, so there is everything you want in performance and availability monitoring, and it's done automatically. It can save you a lot of time. It is not just for NetApp. The pricing is as low as $300 per month, uh, which is, for the full monitoring product, 